we're going to look at disease, how it infects us and how we fight it. Hit start to begin. Microorganisms are tiny, tiny life forms, so small that you can only see them through a microscope. Microorganisms are also known as microbes, and some of them can be nasty. They cause disease. We call these ones pathogens. The first type of microbe we're going to meet is fungus. A certain type of fungus causes athlete's foot. Zoom in for a closer look. You know you want to. It's this fungus that's causing the disease. The second type of microbe is bacteria. Bacteria are single living cells. Just one of them, like you can see here, is called a bacterium. What happens when it starts to multiply? Zoom out to see. Bacteria will multiply and multiply into the millions until there are so many of them they make us ill. Tuberculosis, a lung disease, and salmonella food poisoning are all caused by bacteria. So are the sexually transmitted infections, gonorrhea, syphilis and chlamydia. Sexually transmitted means the infections are passed on by unprotected sex. So then, here you can see our friends, fungus and bacteria, and this other little dot. What's that? It's the final form of microbe. It's called a virus, and it's so small you're going to have to zoom in again to see it. An interesting thing about virus microbes is that they can only reproduce inside the cells of other organisms, which is why they are so very small. Another interesting thing is that some people aren't convinced that viruses are even living things at all. Flu, chickenpox, measles, mumps and HIV are all caused by viruses. HIV seriously weakens the immune system, creating the condition known as AIDS. OK, we've got fungi, bacteria and viruses, but how do they all work? This is a group of microbes. Some of these can cause disease by releasing poisonous chemicals, also known as toxins, that damage the cells in our bodies. Some types of disease are infectious, which means they can spread from you to me. So back off. This cute little bunny rabbit has an infectious disease. The microbes causing the disease begin to spread into the air around the rabbit. One of the ways harmful microbes can be spread is through the air we breathe. Another way is through water. Plop the rabbit into the water and see what happens. Now the water is carrying the disease microbes. And as water can carry things a very long way, diseases can spread far once they get into it. Which means anyone or anything drinking this water will be infected. <coughs> this particular infectious disease has spread across the river and is already infecting the rabbits on the other side. Contact with infected animals and contaminated food can then spread disease further, even maybe to humans. Cooking will kill microbes, though, so it's a good idea to prepare food carefully. Some good news is that our bodies are extremely clever. We have a series of natural barriers that prevent microbes getting into our systems or that kill them before they can cause serious damage. The first barrier is our skin. Just try and get the microbe past it. Nope. That microbe isn't getting in any time soon. So let's try another way past your skin. How about through your mouth? Then it can get down the food pipe. And into your stomach. But the thing is that, as well as chips and biscuits, the stomach contains a lot of hydrochloric acid. 
drag the microbes down to find out what that does to them. That's right, microbes are no match for stomach acid. <laughs> we have other natural barriers in our bodies. For example, there is the sticky mucus in our windpipes and the tubes leading to our lungs. This mucus easily traps microbes to stop them getting any further. Microbes spread in lots of different ways. They can also get into our system through cuts and broken skin, especially if there is no scab forming a natural barrier. What happens when microbes do get past your natural barriers? You're infected. But don't forget about your immune system. Whizzing around in your blood are lots and lots of white blood cells. And white blood cells are skilled at killing microbes. They can recognise chemicals called antigens on the surface of an invading microbe. There are two different types of white blood cell and they deal with microbes in two different ways. Some white blood cells release chemicals. These are called antibodies. They stick to the microbes and make them harmless. The white blood cells can release different antibodies to match different microbes. So, as I said, there's another way white blood cells neutralise microbes. What do you think that is? Move this white blood cell around and see what happens. This type of white blood cell engulfs the microbes to kill them. With white blood cells doing the hard work of recognising and destroying microbes, we are well defended against disease. And that's why we don't often get ill. Microbes be gone. Time for a refresh. Some microbes are harmful and can cause diseases. They are called pathogens. Fungus is one type of pathogen. Fungi cause athlete's foot and thrush. Lovely. Bacteria are usually smaller than fungi. They multiply into the millions and have many different shapes. Viruses are even smaller than bacteria. They live inside the cells of other organisms. The body has natural barriers to stop microbes getting into our systems. These are the skin, scabs on the skin if you get a cut, sticky mucus in the windpipe and lungs, stomach acid and tears. There are two types of white blood cell. Some create antibodies that make microbes harmless. Some engulf microbes and kill them.